Scripture reading is Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male or your female servant or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Amen. After Emmanuel Choir and Nisi Orchestra's praise, we will watch the senior pastor's video sermon entitled Remember the Sabbath Day to Keep It Holy, Session 2. Loving brothers and sisters in Christ, members of branch churches and local sanctuaries, and all believers who are attending this service through the satellite or on the internet all over the world and to see viewers. The sons of Israel stayed in Egypt for about 400 years. In the later period, period they became slaves in the difficult and dangerous jobs. When they cried out to God, He remembered His promise that He made with His ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God called Moses to bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt. However, the Pharaoh didn't want to send the Israelites away, and the ten plagues came upon the land of Egypt. But no plague came upon the Israelites who were living in the land of Goshen. You experience it every day. Exodus 8.22 says, But on that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people are living, so that no swarms of insects will be there, in order that you may know that I, the Lord, am, the, in, am in the midst of the land. God set apart and protected the land where the sons of Israel were living. How thankful they must have been for being selected and set apart as God's people. Also, they must have been moved by God's mighty power. Even today, God sets apart and protects His children in a spiritual Goshen. Just as He kept the sons of Israel from the ten plagues in Egypt, He guards His, His children from all kinds of troubles of the world. But there is a condition. God's children must stay within Goshen. To stay in Goshen spiritually means to stay in the Word of God. God tells us to keep the Sabbath holy. Beginning with this session, I will explain to you the ways to keep the Sabbath holy. I hope you will keep the Sabbath holy in obedience to the Word so that you will be distinguished as God's children, be guarded, and receive abundant blessings. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will be set apart from this world that belongs to the devil and receive the protection and blessings of God so that you will be filled with thankfulness. Loving brothers and sisters, sisters in Christ, what do, we do, what do we have to do to keep the Sabbath holy? First, we must not do any worldly work. The Sabbath is a day for us to come to the church, attend worship service, have fellowship with the believers, and enjoy spiritual rest. Today's passage, Exodus 20, 8 through 10, says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male or your fem female servant or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with, e with you. Here, work refers to the work of this world that has no relation with God. It refers to all personal things that we do for our benefit, such as the labor and work done to earn money. Of course, we have to do our job faithfully for six days, and God says, six days you shall labor and do all your work. 
The head of the household has to take care of his family, and the housewife has to look after the housework. Students have to study hard. But on the Lord's Day, we have to rest as heavenly citizens and God's children, rather than involving ourselves in worldly activities. But today's passage says that not only you, but also your son or your daughter, your male or your female servant, or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you must not work. The spiritual meaning of this is that you have have to rest, and not only you, but you have to put the rest, everything that is under your control. Namely, on the Sabbath, you should rest from all works so that your mind will not be busy thinking of the worldly things, and you'll be able to dwell in God only. Is there anybody among you who thinks, I have to earn money, so how can you just take the whole day off? It will cause too much of a loss. But it is not so. God protects our areas of business and workplaces when we keep the Sabbath holy according to His Word. Even though we work only for six days, He gives us as much as we would otherwise earn for the seven days, and He may give even more than that. We can see that God let the sons of Israel experience this very clearly in Exodus chapter 16. During the Exodus, they were in the wilderness, and it wasn't easy for them to get food. When the people complained, God gave them manna for, for six days, every day except on the Sabbath. God didn't give them manna on the Sabbath to let them keep the Sabbath. Instead, He let them gather two days' worth of manna on the previous day. On the other days, if they left any manna until the next day, they would breed worms and, worms and become foul. But surprisingly, when they gathered manna on the day before the Sabbath, it would neither breed worms or, nor become a fowl during the Sabbath. Nevertheless, some people did not obey but went out to gather manna on the Sabbath too. Of course, they couldn't get anything. God let them understand that He was the one who could give them their daily bread. Furthermore, he let them realize that he could give them what they could eat for seven days, even though they gathered food only for six days, with the exception of being the seventh. This principle is the same today. God gives us what we need in abundance if we keep the seventh according to the word of God. But if we violate the Sabbath by working and not being able to trust and rely on God, then we cannot receive the protection and blessings of God. So our income will decrease and we will also have losses because of unexpected diseases, accidents, and other misfortunes. Even if we work on the Sabbath, the result is that we don't really gain more income, just as just like those sons of Israel who went out to gather manna on the Sabbath day. If you go to Europe, you will see many countries are keeping the Sabbath day. They don't open their shops on Sunday. I've been to Europe in 1989 and other years later on, when I went to France, Rome, Swiss or other countries, I saw most, most shops were closed on Sunday. Many church members give their testimonies of receiving protection and blessings by keeping the Sabbath. For example, there were some testimonies as follows from those who were running shops. When they began to close the shop on Sundays with faith, and attend the church, they could earn in six days as much as they previously earned during the seven-day work, work, work week. They were giving these testimonies with happiness, saying their income was increasing since they began to keep the Sabbath. 
Also, some people said that they worked on the Lord's Day and earned some money, but because of some unexpected shortfall, they lost exactly the amount they earned that day. If you are not protected by God and lose what you have just earned, you, your work was meaningless. Furthermore, you cannot receive the blessing of God, so it is a great loss. I hope you will keep the Sabbath holy and not miss any of the God-given blessings. Brothers and sisters, the faith of most of you members has grown up and you keep the Lord's Day holy. On Sundays, you don't work in the world and you come to the church, attend worship services, and do your God-given duties. But sometimes, even though you have faith and even though you want to keep the Lord's Day holy, you may have to work on Sundays due to reasons that are beyond your control. Listen to this message carefully. If you ever thought, I have faith to keep the Sabbath holy, but I'm in co- trouble from time, to time, uh, from time to time because of inevitable situations. So pay attention to this message and find a solution. Let me explain to you about these exceptional cases. This world is quite different from the world of the Old Testament. During the Old Testament times, all the people of Israel kept the Sabbath. Because everyone kept the Sabbath, it wasn't difficult for them to keep the Sabbath. It was the law of the nation. But the situation is very different today. We live with worldly people who do not believe in God. We are not living in countries centered around Christianity where every citizen has to keep the Sabbath day by law of the country. Also, in old days, most people were farmers, fishermen, shepherds, and herdsmen, and keepers of livestock. But there are so many different kinds of jobs today. And thus, the form of keeping the Sabbath may be different from before. Of course, the Word of God itself, which commands us to keep the Sabbath holy, does not change at all. Even in these days, we have to keep the Sabbath holy according to the Word of God. But what God considers more important is the innermost heart of men. The formality of keeping the Lord's Day are are important, but the more important thing is the kind of heart with which we keep it. If we understand the meaning of God's commanding us to keep the Sabbath holy and follow His will, God will accept our hearts. Even if we may have to work because of various circumstances, God will not say we have violated the Sabbath if we have the heart to keep it holy. Also, He applies different standards for people in different measures of faith. For example, new believers who have weak faith do not have the faith to control their circumstances yet, so they cannot keep the Sabbath completely and properly. If we force them to keep the Sabbath at this stage, they may lose their strength and even leave the church. This is not the will of God, who considers one soul more precious than the whole world. We have to guide them to do their best within the measures of their faith. until their faith grows up enough. Also, even for those who have good faith, there are some situations in which they cannot help but work. Let me explain how they can keep the Sabbath in these cases. First case is those who work for the life and security of the public. They are soldiers, police officers, or medical doctors. Suppose soldiers and police officers do not work but just spend all day Sunday in the church because they have to keep the Sabbath. Then what will happen? The national security will be in danger and the social order will be destroyed. Furthermore, they are bound by the law of the country and they have many restrictions preventing them from keeping the Lord's Day completely. When the Korean War broke out, North Korea invaded on Sunday. There was a six-day war in 1967. I remember the one-eyed general named 
Uh, Moshe Dayan, uh, he prayed to God like this. God of all hosts, please make this work end in the six days so that I will not violate the seventh day. It was famous in many news media in those days. I didn't believe in God by then, and I thought how he could do so. He was very famous, and the war ended in six days, and Israel won great victory without violating the Sabbath day. Six years later, another war broke out. The war broke in uh, 1973, and they attacked Israel on Sunday because the Israeli keep the Sabbath day holy, and so the Israeli seemed defeated in the beginning. But after the Sabbath, they recovered almost all the lost land. If all the soldiers and police officers keep the Sabbath only because it is the Sabbath, a country may collapse and it may bring destruction to the country. Let's say all the police officers take a rest on Sunday, then thieves and robbers will play all day long on Sunday. It's the same with medical doctors and nurses and other medical personnel. If they close the hospital on Sundays, how can the patients in the hospitals receive treatment? It will be a big problem for someone who was in an emergency patient. Thus, even if they work on Sundays, God does not say they sinned. But these people must attend the Sunday service. Whether before the work or after the work, they must attend a worship service. And if possible, it's the best to keep the Lord's Day completely. These days, in huge medical centers or hospitals, there are places where worship or churches inside so that their customers can give worship services. They have such facilities for their patients to give worship service. If there is not such a place, you can worship God through the Internet. If there is no such a thing available, keep the Sabbath holy from the depths of your heart without enjoying any entertainment. If you, gain, uh, you can, if you can give worship service in the early morning or in the evening, then you should attend such services. If you can't, you should try to buy sermon tapes or some other things. For example, some church members in the above fields work on other holidays, changing the shifts with other workers to keep the Lord's Day completely. In this church, there are members who take other co-workers' shift in order to keep the Sabbath day. Uh, there was a man member who used to work for a prison. In order to keep the Sabbath day holy, he took others' shifts and worked two more days in the weekdays. When he happened to work on Sunday, he asked those whose shifts he took over, and so he was able to keep the Sabbath. As long as you have faith, you can keep the Sabbath by any means. Second, those who work in the distribution and restaurant industries have to work on Sundays too. In our church, we have light and salt mission for people in these businesses. As the world is changing, most shops open on Sundays too. I'm talking about this country. Thus, more and more people have to work on Sundays. The Light and Salt Mission and Restaurant Mission members work in the department stores or in the restaurants on Sundays. So they gather after work and attend worship service. If we ask those people to keep the Sabbath completely from the beginning, we cannot evangelize them. 
It's the same as telling them to stop earning their living. So at first, they are allowed to attend the Sunday service at night after their work is over. First, they, we guide them to grow their faith through the word preached. Then, when their faith grows up, some of them voluntarily move to another kind of job where they can keep the Lord's Day completely. But the members of the Light and Salt Mission have the faith to keep the Lord's Day completely. But many of them chose choose to stay in the Light and Salt mission to save more souls in those industries. Among those who used to be Light and Salt mission members, there are many members who have faith good enough to keep the Sabbath day holy. They either changed their workplace where they could keep the Sabbath day, but and some made their schedule so that uh, their off day could fall on Sunday. They come to this church and give Sunday worship service in the in church. The members of the Light and Salt Mission came to have greater faith, and now many of them have moved to this church. And this day, this is why the Light and Salt Mission cannot revive, because they come to this church once they have faith. However, there are those who have good faith they still remain in the Light and Salt Mission. They stay there to keep the mission going or to preach the gospel to those who work in their fields. Even though they have faith that is good enough to keep the Sabbath day, they stay there and help other members. Then, do you think God will say to them, why don't you keep the Sabbath holy? God will rather praise and commend them. Even though they have faith, they sacrifice themselves and preach the gospel to those co-workers. Like the name of the group suggests, they want to remain in those businesses to become the light and salt of the world and save those people who are working in the same field. God does not say they are violating the truth. Here are some other cases. Sometimes even the owners, not just employees of some shops, have to open their shops on Sundays. It's because they have to follow the rules of the department stores in which they are located or the company to which they belong. If the department store is open on Sunday, their store cannot close their shops because they have to follow the policy of the department store. Then, what can they do in these cases? They can hire unbelievers to open the shop on Sundays. Unbelievers, even when they do not work on Sundays, will spend their personal time in the world anyway and not attend church. Even if the store is closed on Sunday, those unbelievers will not come to church. They would rather entertain themselves more, drinking and playing in the world. It is not really a violation of the will of God to hire these unbelievers and let them work. Some of these shop owners give to God the whole income they get on Sundays. It's because they are not opening the shop on Sundays with the desire for money. But if you are caught up with the matters of the shop and cannot worship in spirit and truth, you have to pray about it to bring down some sort of God's work on you. If you pray with true faith, the Almighty God can change your circumstances. I gave you my testimony before. After I accepted God, I was in great depth. Since I was sick for seven years, there was a great amount of death. 
Even I and my wife worked so hard after we accepted the Lord, we could barely pay only the interest. Then there was the offer. A job offer, giving good pay with a house to live in, it was offered to both me and my wife. There was extra income as well. But I refused the offer because I had to work twice a month on Sundays. I was a very novice Christian. There was a mountain. I and my wife went to the mountain and collected rocks and stones which were remains of the explosion of our construction. It was very hot, but we put Uh, pastor s u j i n Lee under an umbrella under the hot sun rays, and we collected rocks. Even though there was a great offer, in order not to break the Sabbath day, we refused the offer and did such a job instead. How great trust relationship was made between me and God this way. Since I accepted the Lord as, I, as well as I, as well as my wife and the three children, Pastor Su Jin Lee, Mi Young Lee, and Mi Young Lee, have never violated the Sabbath. When I had to lead a revival meeting in a distant city from Seoul, I finished all the services on Sunday and signed all the documents and left for the city at late night, usually at 10. Then I've never stopped by at the rest area to buy something to drink or something like that. When there was a seminar, such as a cell, group, uh, cell leader seminar, I left early after I finished my job on Sunday. But not only I, but also my team has never purchased in a rest area. Then you may ask like this, what if the children ask for food or drink? What should I do then? You should prepare it in an a d v a n c e Why don't you buy such things on Friday or Saturday? You purchase such stuff in advance, candy bars and snacks and stuff like that. You prepare them in secret and give them to your children. I don't have a car. Isn't it the same? Why don't you buy such things and put them in a bag? Well, you may not be able to drink an icy cold drink on a hot summer day. Well, you may until the clock hits 12 midnight and go get something. I've never made an excuse or compromised. I have kept it strictly. Don't you find God was very pleased with those who kept the Sabbath holy and gave great blessing to them in the Old Testament? Every little thing has something to do with the reward in heaven, and it keeps the trust relationship with God 100%. Third, not only shop owners, but just the company employees sometimes have to work on Sundays. Perhaps they have to go on a business trip, having a Sunday in the middle, or they have to go for some kind of training. If they do not follow the policy of the company, it wouldn't really be morally proper. Then they can come back after their work and attend a service at a later time, or they can attend a service on the internet or through the satellite TV. Fourth, there are also important national exams taking place on Sundays. You cannot get a certain qualification without passing the exam, and this way you cannot achieve your goal.
This happens because this country is not a Christian country. In these cases, if you do not intend to violate the Sabbath, it is okay for you to take the exam and attend the service as best you can. Either you can attend early morning service or you may just attend a Sunday evening service if you have to take the exam on the time when the Sunday morning service is taking place. But if all these are impossible, then you make uh, Sunday as the Sabbath day and keep it. Then you make uh, Saturday as the Sabbath day and keep it. How can I attend a service? Yes, you can, you can nowadays. There is internet and recorded messages on tapes. You may listen to them one more time. And you can also give praises and prayers. You set apart some time and you keep it. Then, God will say it is acceptable. I'm talking about the situation where you cannot keep the Sabbath day. You have faith that that is good enough to take the Sabbath day. But even, even though you want to keep the Sabbath day, you cannot because you're an athlete or there is a game you have to play. Let's say you are a soccer player of a nation and the game is taking place on Sunday. It would be good if other players can substitute, but then you should play the game for the people and for the country you present for. You should make up your mind and keep Saturday as the Sabbath. If you can attend a worship service in some other time on Sunday, you can attend this service. You should know this stuff and practice it. Other than this, there are so many other situations and circumstances. God considers so many different situations of different people because He wants everyone to receive salvation. He's enlarging the boundary as much as possible within His justice so that the greatest numbers of people can come into that boundary of salvation. Therefore, the most important thing in all these situations is the heart of each person. You may have to work on Sundays due to inevitable reasons, but you should have the heart to offer the day in a godly manner, being careful about each of your words and your actions. Also, You should have the desire and longing to keep the Sabbath holy and completely. If you truly long for it, your heart will be in the sanctuary, even though your body may be at some, some place else. If you cannot attend a worship service for some reason, you will feel very sorry about it. You will also wait for the sermon to be uploaded quickly, not wanting to miss any of the messages. I believe that none of you will misunderstand the word concerning violating the Sabbath, thinking that you can keep the Sabbath in the way you want, following your own desires. What do we think I will do? What do you think I will do? Do you think I will ever violate the Sabbath until the Lord comes back? It will never happen. As I told you earlier, when I go to overseas countries or some other place on Sunday, I haven't even bought a drink. I've never uh, bought something to eat just because I was hungry. I wait until midnight, and once it is after midnight, I come by a restaurant area and buy something. Let's say a college tries to, uh, to give me a doctorate degree once I pass a small test. Do you think I will break the Sabbath and take the test to get the doctoral degree? No way. I will never compromise. 
If you have the same faith like mine, you will do the same thing. But if you can't, and if you do as I explain in this message, you won't call you committed a sin. You may give excuses that you really wanted to keep the Sabbath, but if it is not acknowledged by God, it means you have violated the Sabbath. I hope you will keep in mind once again that violating the Sabbath will jeopardize the status of salvation and not let this kind of thing happen. It may uh, be burdened to live by the word of God. At the first level of faith, since you don't know the truth yet, you won't be asked why you violate the Sabbath. But once you are at the second level of faith, people will tell you to keep the Sabbath day holy. Cell leader, sub district, or district leader will come to you, tell you, uh, tell you to uh, keep the Lord's day holy, and it may become a burden on you. But think of this: even if it is a burden on you, isn't it better to receive salvation and go to a better heaven? But if you don't receive salvation after you don't live a good Christian life, then what is the reason that God is giving us more room in keeping keeping the Lord's day holy today? It doesn't mean we can just adapt to the situation in which we cannot keep the Lord's day. It is the love of God who waits for us and endures with us until our faith grows up to be more perfect. I hope you will understand this will of God and keep the Lord's day holy. I will continue to explain the ways to keep the Sabbath in the next session too. Let me conclude the message. Loving members, to rest is to relax and be at comfort. God commanded us to keep the Sabbath holy by being in the sanctuary and not doing worldly work. It is the way to give us true rest. You may ask this question. On Sunday, I want to take rest at home. I want to eat well, enjoy some entertainment, and sleep. I think it is a true rest. How can you call it a rest to come to church, eat noodles, and attend Sunday morning, evening, and even Daniel prayer meetings? Well, if you have strong faith, you will not say it like this because it makes you happy to come to church and stay in a church and pray to God. But when your faith is not complete, you may say it like this. Now, don't you think you can go to better heaven because you keep the Sabbath holy? Don't you think you can take a true rest forever and ever in heaven because of that? In heaven, you don't need to work. There is only happiness itself. You can go to such good heaven and take a good rest forever. It's the, it is the result of keeping the, Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath holy. But if you compromise and take a flesh and rest, you'll be able to go to a good heaven. You will not be able to go to a good heaven. You will not receive salvation. If you think of suffering in the lake of fire forever, how can you call it a true rest? If you keep the Sabbath day holy and go to heaven and take a good rest forever, that is the true rest. Don't you feel happy to keep the Sabbath day once your faith grows up? You're happy to come to church, worship God, give praises to God, and have friendship with brothers and sisters in faith. So, to make us enjoy true rest and happiness, God tells us to keep the Sabbath day holy. That's why God calls it a blessed day. How many burdens do the people carry in the world just for a week? They have so many worries and burdens of making money, their children, and their health, and so on. Jesus said to these people, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If we fill ourselves with the word of God, the spiritual bread, 
give praises and prayers, have fellowship with believers, and do the voluntary works, our spirit will be filled with new strength in the Holy Spirit. We will also be filled with the hope of heaven and enjoy freedom in the truth to the extent that we recover the lost image of God in us through the Lord's days. To keep the Sabbath completely is to rest at comfort in the Lord, understanding the great love of God who gives us only good things. Those who understand how sweet this rest is will wait for the Lord's day while they are in the world for six days. May you remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy with this kind of longing heart and enjoy the true rest. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let us pray thinking over the message. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let us receive the prayer for the sick of the senior pastor through video. Please lay your hands on your sick heart or lay your hands on your uh, desire. on your chest for the desire of your heart and receive the prayer with faith. Hallelujah. Almighty God, our loving Father, please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV in branch churches and local sanctuaries and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart. Drive away negative thoughts thoughts and doubts, and drop away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints, nerves, tissues, and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I commend the enemy devil and Satan. All diseases, germs, and viruses and infirmities go away. Light come. Please scorch all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problem, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened. Get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes say well. Let the ears say well. Let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of the after effects of all kinds of accidents. Fix their broken bones. Restore them from burns. Let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no scar left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves, tissues, and cells be regenerated. Bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessings of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places, and their servants go away. Go away, evil, unclean, force, and deceitful spirits, separating spirits, and all forces of darkness. Losing the bonds of wickedness, darkness, go away. Light come. Father God, give them strength to c r o w d in prayer, and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, literal things go well with them, and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week, and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery words of the Holy Spirit, heavenly host and angels, And with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding, and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from 
worldly things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I have met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.